So I'd like to go over, hands down, the best weapon set in the entire game that everybody should have. And no, it is not the Mirage weapons, which you would have to spend over 3 million to get a full set, or the Lionheart, which is similarly priced, if not more expensive. It is indeed the Stronghold weapons. And there are many different ones out there. And right now, you can obtain them for very cheap. And that is because of yesterday's update. So in this video, I'd like to go over exactly how you can obtain them yourself without a big Astral Diamond investment. And I'd like to make sure that you know why these weapons are the best. I will compare them against Mirage, Lionheart, and also this Watcher set, which can be pretty useful. So before we get started, again, I'd like to give a massive thank you to all of these channel members for the added support. And so these Stronghold weapons, you may look at the ones I have exactly right now and think they're not exactly cheap either. Already over 1.4 million for both your off hand and main hand. And yeah, you'd be dead right. They are very expensive. However, I'd like to bring your attention to the collections way down the bottom here in the Stronghold. You may note you have different ranks of these masterwork weapons. Here we have the rank threes with their 800 item level, but you also have the rank twos and the rank ones. And all of them have the exact same thing in common is that they all give the exact same bonus and that bonus it doesn't matter which weapon they come from as long as it's that stronghold set they will all stack with one another somebody who has rank two set will stack with the rank three set or even the new baywood ones that they just released but those are hella expensive and the only difference then between the sets is the item level and does that item level matter no because in the most content in the entire game, again, you're scaled down. And so, especially as a new player, that item level difference is irrelevant. So how do you get these? Very simply, through the new Dragonflight system. Let's explain how it's going to work and how exactly you can get these weapons, how long it's going to take you, and potentially how much you would have to invest then with regards to just your time alone. So this Dragonflight grind is something I'm certainly going to do, and I would highly recommend everybody do it. If you already have those masterwork weapons on your main character, like I do right here on my rogue, I highly recommend going and doing it on your alts. You may very well be like me. I'm gearing up, let's say a warlock and a fighter, and none of them have masterwork weapons. So how do you get these weapons for nice and cheap without having to spend like 3 million astral diamonds? Well, the first requirement is to join a guild. Feel free to join my guild as we will be running this event in order to obtain those weapons. There will be a link in all of my videos where you can join our Discord server. Yes, unfortunately, you will need Discord as that is the place where we can chat with each other and also then give each other information and make announcements. And overall, it's a lot easier to admin for, let's say, members. That way your chat is saved and it's not like you're going to miss anything then when you're not in game. So once you're in a guild, you can make your way to this vendor, at least if they're high enough level. The Outfitter, when you go to his Artifacts tab, will sell you these Stronghold weapons. You can see you'll get them on green initially, but that won't affect the bonus that they provide you when you have two of them slotted. They will cost you, however, 15,000 guild marks each, along with 25 Dragonflight fangs each. That is why you will need to be doing quite a bit of Dragonflight. But you can very easily get Dragonflight finished within two or three minutes with a decent guild. So every day you want to head to this traveling wizard and pick up the quests he gives you. Initially, you might just get a gold quest, which is called a matter of dragons, defeat a dragonflight dragon. Once you do finish your first dragonflight, you head back to your traveling wizard. As soon as that event is over, you can see the timer there under the mini map and you can go hand in your gold quest completing it you will get your first dragonflight fang there you will get your first dragonflight fang there and then every day he will give you 
this Dragon Pacific quest where we have to kill Ekdos the Cruel. We can accept that and you will get Dragons of Concern. And most importantly, Dragons of Concern, you want to pick up that quest every time you finish Dragonflight. You speak back to the guy and claim the quest again. Now the basics of Dragonflight, you can start just by speaking to this guy and paying 2,500 guild marks and then Dragonflight has begun. Then as a guild, we'll coordinate where you should go and we're going to top left to the red one and you engage your dragon. It will take a minute first to actually appear in the location once you started the event. And then you just go and kill your dragon. When you go ahead and actually kill one of them, then you will see that you will have basically one minute left to kill all the other dragons. But there is no need. In order to complete your quest, you only have to kill one of them to get your fang. You can see we leave the rest of the dragons at 100% and make our way back to the stronghold. Once the timer is up, you'll be able to hand back in that Dragons of Concern quest, obtaining your rewards, most importantly, fang of the Dragonflight, and pick up Dragons of Concern quest again. And through that process, you will very easily get as many of those Dragonflight fangs as you need for your full weapon set might take you a week or two just by attending dragonfly events like we will host every day at this certain time so again if you need a guild feel free to join us for dragonflights to obtain essentially the best weapon set in the game now before we go into the nitty gritty comparing this stronghold set weapons versus watcher lionheart or mirage let's go over how you can easily get the influence you also need to get these weapons well the very simple way is by donating things to your guild coffer which is just here depending on what guild you're in you may have certain areas that are full and certain things that are not you can see you can donate these treasures which are correspondent to your said campaigns and you can see you can donate let's say dark gifts 99 vouchers and you would gain a ton of guild marks we would go over the cap there with 999 and so vouchers is about one of the main ways you can do it but you can also donate influence you can donate the strong boxes of influence that we got from dragonflight you can see one of them would give us 400 guild marks two of them 800 and you're getting those strong boxes easily just from completing that quest again we got a few other ones we got gems as well there we go we can donate two for 144 much less than the influence one and then we also got a surplus equipment one which is probably pretty full as donating equipment people will donate like really old legendary rings for about four thousand guild marks or three thousand i think anyway donating those and that's it that's how you gain your guild marks however what you can do every day is very simply complete some heroic encounters within your stronghold if you're solo you might want to go to one of the smaller ones for example we'll go to like devil attack just down here we have 10 minutes left on it and once we're there you can see your heroic encounter starts and you can just go kill the devils as they emerge and once you go kill them all off your heroic encounter is complete and you can claim your reward you can see your first heroic encounter give you 150 influence the next one i believe will just give you 75 and then 50 and then i believe 25 and then like 10 so it diminishes but also killing enemies you will get some of these actual vouchers these vouchers which you can donate again these ones are only in gray so they don't give you a whole lot but that's essentially the very basic way of how you gain guild marks you can every day get a bunch of influence you can get about a thousand i believe if you do marauders as well along with your heroics and i know some guilds who used to do this grind pretty much every day doing marauders doing an heroic encounter farm when you do it as part of a group it's very easy especially when you go and do it on a bunch of alts 
And that's how essentially you'll get your guild marks. Alternatively, there are events. You might want to wait specifically for, let's say, the times to guild marks event before you donate anything to the coffer and that way you get twice as many guild marks or before you want to buy anything that costs guild marks again you might want to wait until the guild mark costs are discounted by 20 percent and that's the way you can obtain the best weapon set in the game just by doing a little bit of guild events very simply. And this weapon set, again, is the best because of the bonus it provides. It provides you and your party members. It's a total of 10% outgoing damage, 10% outgoing healing for your healers, and reduction of 10% incoming damage. So how does it compare to, let's say, Lionheart or Watcher or even the Mirage weapons? Well, that's when we need to do a bit of math. You can already see directly here, getting the five times stronghold buff versus the Mirage weapons, you would need the Mirage weapons to deal over 6.6% .6 of your overall damage in order to compete with just the damage bonus you would get from the stronghold weapons. That's a significant amount. Not many classes, if any, I believe can have their Mirage clones being able to deal that much damage unless you're in Pacific burst damage boss fights. So in my opinion, Mirage weapons are too situational to be able to be called the overall best in the game. Now, it really relies on how many damage buffs you have. For example, if we already have, let's say, 100 damage buffs on both sides there and add 10% what you'd get from Stronghold, you can see they would only give you overall 5% extra damage and so your mirage weapons would only have to give you about 5% damage to compete. Now for these examples we're going to ignore the item level as especially when you're a newer player you're generally just going to be in scaled content the entire time. All your random cues they're all scaled. They got to be scaled in order for them to balance the player base so that you don't have one player steamrolling through all the content and carrying people and that can end up a negative experience for some players. I know there's arguments on both sides. Personally, it can be great fun when you get a really good guy who's got their character maxed out and can just carry your ass through any content. On the flip side, you feel a little bit useless when that happens and that can just end up not fun. I don't really find it fun getting carried the entire time in my games. It just doesn't really feel engaging enough. And that is why Cryptic Studios have gone to that side and ended up making a scaling system to kind of balance players together. At least that's one of the reasons. Now, the reason I've gone with 50% base in damage buffs is because of this just here. Here's an example on the rogue. You would get 10% damage buffs from Skullcracker, about 7.5% from leaving stealth. The knight would give you another 7.5%. That's a companion bonus. Materi 11%, Minsk 8.6%. This is in a boss fight at least, and that is where most of your damage really matters and then let's say an overload another five percent so that's about 50 percent this can be more or less depending on what class you're on if it is less that makes the stronghold weapons even better to run with especially as you look let's say this is 10 percent and this is zero you can see the stronghold weapons will actually give you overall 10% more damage and that decreases as the more you have. Let's say we go 10% on that side, add another 10% to get to 20% and that's about 9% increase. So having a look then versus the Lionheart, which straight up are a lot worse because all they give you is 7.5%. You can see that right there, Lionheart using that as a set will just give you 7.5% when your stamina is full, Whenever you're dodging around the place, that damage bonus will decrease and then you will, on the flip side, gain added survivability. But you're not getting both at maximum at the same time like you would with Masterwork, which goes all the way up 10% when in a full party with everybody using them. Of course, you might get a selfish person here and there who doesn't use them, but if everybody, including new players, is using them, that's a massive bonus overall 
to everybody. And we can go then have a look at the Watcher set, which I do have here as well. I grinded my ass off in Watcher runs, managed to obtain it. And you can see it in overall would give you a bonus of maximum 5% power, 5% crit severity, 5% crit strike, and also 5% defense, which is going to add a little bit of survivability about 2.5%, nowhere near compared to the 10% you gain from the stronghold weapons with five stacks. However, the problem with the Watcher set is it takes 25 seconds to actually get the full 5% on all those statistics. So if let's say you're in an ideal situation for a watcher, you're in a long trial or boss fight when you never go out of combat, then you would add total of 15% stats. And because people running with let's say five times straw old weapons, myself included, already have like crit strike, crit severity and power at 90%, the only place you will fit those extra stats is in accuracy. So I'll have to rebalance my stats to get more accuracy or let's say more damage buffs, which I pretty much have all the best by still having these caps. And if you have an augment, your accuracy will go a little bit higher. And so Watcher set adding 15% is very close to the five times stronghold buff. So yes, arguably you could run with Watcher. I just don't feel it as good because you gain the extra survivability through the stronghold weapons of 10% versus the watcher of only about 2.5%. And the stronghold weapons is a much more reliable bonus since you'll get it from the very beginning of the fight. And if you leave combat, you'll still have the bonus. So you can use the set within AOE and you can use the set within single target. Whereas the Watcher, you're going to need a separate build for AoE and an entirely separate build for single target, which as a new player, that's just more cost. And so not really feasible. And overall, I can't consider them the best weapons. And that's why anything with the Stronghold set bonus, like these Masterwork ones, the Feywood ones, or just the tier two Stronghold weapons that you can get now easily through Dragonflight, are the best weapons in the game especially when you're scaled down the item level doesn't matter at all so that's that again just go do dragonflight every day join a guild that does it get those fangs and you can donate the strong boxes that you will obtain through dragonflight for the influence and overall you can do a bit of heroic encounters here and there and you can also save up those strong boxes to donate them when we actually get double guild marks event which is just upcoming at september the 8th which yes it's a month away but maybe you won't have enough dragonflight fangs by then you can definitely take your time as i probably will probably do maybe five runs per day maybe two or three if we're short on time. Again, you can get those runs done within like two minutes. And the way we're gonna do it is we're just gonna first kill the red dragon on one run, then the blue one, then the green one, and then the black one. And that way, everybody's daily quest will get completed. We don't have to spend the 10 minutes to try and kill all the dragons. And that just a, seems a waste of time. I don't know why the mechanic is there. When we completed Dragonflight just by killing one dragon, Aesil even got a legendary ring. So they're dropping. You don't have to kill all four dragons. The surprise bag just seems to be random. So again, that's Dragonflight for you. And that is the number one reason, in my opinion, why you should actually be running it with this update. Very easy to get many, many of those fangs, which you can spend on other things as well, just for some fashion. I don't find any of this equipment too great down here as you would get from the updated rewards for Dragonflight. There are one or two rings that you can especially use on a fresh alt character who let's say you can't gear out just yet. And there are some shirt and pants which can be useful as well. So again, I'd like to give a special thank you to all of these channel members for helping me keep my channel going. And if I present this well, consider leaving the video a like. If you're new around here, consider subscribing. See you guys around. Goodbye for now.